Hey, everybody. I um, show that it's 3.30 and I don't see Diane yet, but um, we have a pretty full agenda, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is the April 27th meeting of the Des Moines Waterworks Board of Trustees. Um, on our consent agenda today, we have minutes from the March 23rd, 2021 Board of Waterworks Trustees meeting, minutes from the March 30. Uh, Board of Waterworks Trustees meeting, the minutes from the April 6th Planning Committee meeting, minutes from the April 13th Finance and Audit Committee meeting, financial statements, list of payments for March 2021, a summary of CEO approved expenditures in excess of $20,000, and the scheduling of our next meeting date for May 25th, 2021. Is there a motion to move the consent agenda? So moved. And a second. Second. Any questions on this, or Ted? Anything you need to would like to talk about? I would point out, Graham, that our partnership payment is in this month's list of payments, which folks like to know. Okay, that is good to know. All right. And any other comments or questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, seeing none. Michelle, would you record the vote, please? Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Huppert? Yes. And Diane on yet? I don't see her yet. Okay, very good. Yet. All right. Uh, now we do have a time here for public comment. I recognize anyone that would like to address the board. I'm not sure I see any, any people that want to speak here, but I'll defer to Michelle to see if there's anybody online that I don't recognize. I see no general public and no hands raised, Graham. There so. we go. All right. So we will go ahead and move into our action items, starting with item 3A, which is the receive and file of the 2022-2026 five-year capital improvement plan. Um, this will require some discussion, I think, Ted. So I'll turn it over to you before I even seek a motion. Thank you, Graham. Um, as you are aware, the staff, specifically Mike McKernan, presented the five-year CIP to the Finance and Audit Committee at their meeting on April 13th. This is uh, our um, uh, roadmap for the next five years. It helps us identify the projects that we believe we need to bring forward from a capital investment perspective. Um, you can see there are some key elements that Michael highlighted in his presentation on the 13th, including um, the alluvial well field along the Des Moines River, addition of a fourth ASR well in the Des Moines system, um, work on a 10 million gallon per day expansion at Sailorville and then also uh, some funding considerations for um, that entire book of business, all of which was covered um, at the meeting is included in the memo. Um, at this point, we would ask that the, the board receive and file five-year CIP. Excellent, so this has been discussed at finance and audit, but I will seek a motion uh, to receive and file the 2022, 2026, five-year capital improvement plan. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. second. We've got a second from Sue. Any other comments or questions on this? Graham, I just wanted yes. to point out in some of our discussions that we've had with the regional um, group, the, the micro group, this has been so helpful because it has specifically allowed us to talk about some of the things that could become more of a regional expense or regional charge, but it also shows that we are doing what we need to do to continue to 
plan for our customers in the future. So it's really been helpful, the timing of the presentation of this. Excellent, I agree. Any other thoughts or comments or questions on item 3A? Seeing none, I will ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 3B. This is the acceptance of the Polk County Pumping Station storage tank fill line contract. Um, again, maybe I'll have you explain this before I get a motion, Ted. Sure, Graham, thank you. The Polk County Pumping Station is a facility that we use to provide water to unincorporated areas of Polk County between Des Moines and Ankeny, and it's also a significant source of supply for uh, the city of Ankeny. The fill line takes water from the Des Moines distribution system and, and fills the tank. We had an, a number of um, failures on that particular line uh, a few years ago, and determined that we needed to replace the line, awarded a contract in May of 2019. Um, the, the work is, is now complete. There were a couple of, well, there were five change orders actually, a couple of different buckets here, I would say. The first two were um, additional items that we added to the contract to facilitate continued operation of, of the pumping station and the storage tank while the work was going on over the past couple of years a temporary access and then some temporary power that we could use to do some testing on the, the that fill valve that was part of the project. And then the bigger issue, uh, item number four there you can see was uh, about $56,000 worth of additional work associated with a uh, buried footing or concrete structure that we had encountered on the site. Um, we were unaware that the, the, that the footing, that structure was there quite a bit of work to remove that, um, get it out of the way, and then bring in suitable backfill material. So um, the contract is, is now complete. We did um, take a little extra time to do the uh, project. There are some liquidated damages there, but successful completion, we would uh, recommend that the board accept the Polk County Pumping Station storage tank fill line contract. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the Polk County Pumping Station Storage Tank Fill Line Contract completed by, is that Rodness Corporation? Is that correct? That's correct. In the amount of $508,782.63. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Move from, so move from Sue and a second from Joel. And any comments or questions on this item? Seeing and hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. I see that Diane has joined us, this is Rick Mom. Thank you. Here. We're on item 3B, and Michelle's going to record the vote. Excellent. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. And Munns? Yes. Thank you. All right, so moving into item 3C, this is the request authorization to execute the memorandum of understanding between West Moines Waterworks Board of Trustees of the City of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me read that again. The request authorization to execute the memorandum of understanding between West Moines Waterworks and the Board of, Water Trust, Board of Waterworks Trustees of the City of Des Moines, Iowa and the City of West Des Moines on the addition of two data centers in West Des Moines. Again, I think I'll let, turn this over to Ted and let him explain it before I even seek a motion. Certainly, Graham, thank you. This is uh, a little bit of a complicated story. Michelle, can you uh, show the map of, uh, that was the company, the memo? If you have the packet close at hand, you can look at the map. I think that will be um, helpful. Um, West Des Moines uh, Waterworks staff approached Des Moines Waterworks staff some time ago interested in providing water service to two new data centers. Uh, they are called the East Ginger Site and the West Ginger Site. You can see them, they're two of the orange boxes on the map there. And as we've discussed in the past, these data centers require large quantities of water at certain times of year, primarily for cooling. 
So we needed to do some analysis evaluation of the system to make sure, uh, given that this will be the fourth and fifth data center in this area to make sure that we would be able to serve these data centers. And based on that analysis, um, we determined that uh, there were a number of things that were going to be needed in the system in terms of capital construction. Um, one, also, we determined that West Des Moines was going to need to serve these data centers out of what they call their south zone, which is the green zone. Um, east Ginger is actually in the south zone, West Des Moines Waterworks south zone. But West Ginger um, is in what they call zone four, that kind of reddish colored zone. Um, in addition to serving both of these facilities, from the south zone, uh, it was determined that we were going to have to install a throttling valve on the McMullen treatment plant property to ensure that we could direct flow in, in the right direction in the transmission system. It was determined that West Des Moines Waterworks would need to install a water tower. You can see that on the map indicated as the Adams Tower, um, currently proposed as a two million gallon water tower. And also West Des Moines was going to need to install a meter pit at the boundary between their south zone or that green shaded area and their zone four, which is the red shaded area. That meter pit is necessary because we have an agreement with West Des Moines related to the Army Post Road ASR that says they get um, what we called a regional capacity credit or essentially um, a purchase capacity credit what, for water they use in the south zone when the ASR well is running. They funded that ASR well about 75% anyway of the cost. Um, so they are uh, entitled to um, a credit. So basically, water that's used in that south zone that comes from the ASR well is not counted towards their, their max day, up to 3 million gallons per day, which is the capacity of the ASR well. Now, they're gonna have to serve this West Ginger site from the south zone, but to comply with the spirit of that ASR agreement, they need to meter that water as it leaves the south zone and they won't get credit for that. We're gonna deduct that from any credit that they receive. So that any water that leaves the south zone will count towards their, their peak day. So they are responsible for all of the cost of all of these facilities, uh, the meter pit, the throttling valve, the water tower, anything else. We will own and operate the throttling valve once it's complete but they will reimburse us for all the costs. So um, I think I'll stop there, Graham, and see if there are questions. It's a fairly complex arrangement. Maybe before we get to questions, let me go ahead and get a motion. I'm looking for a motion to approve and authorize the chairperson to execute the memorandum of understanding between West Des Moines Waterworks, the Board of Waterworks trustees of the city of Des Moines Iowa and the city of West Des Moines on the addition of two data centers in West Des Moines. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. Second. And I have a second from Sue. Uh, questions and thoughts on this? Ted, have they, have the data centers made any revisions to their needed water use in light of their experience? They have, Diane. Um, some of the initial data center demands that we were seeing for the first data centers like the Mountain Center and the Alluvian Center were you know, approaching 6 million gallons per day. They've revised those needs down fairly significantly. Uh, Mike McKernan, I know, has been involved pretty closely with this analysis. Also, Kyle, maybe Mike or Kyle, could you comment on um, the, the maximum water needs we've assumed from these East and West Ginger data centers? 
Yeah, I'll comment briefly. I know that West Des Moines has had extensive discussions. Uh, I believe we modeled four of these data centers with a, four data centers with a, with a peak day load in total of just over five MGD. So there's been some great refinement. I think West Des Moines is comfortable with the numbers they provided us for the sake of the hydraulic analysis. Thanks, Mark. That answer your question, Diane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts on this item? Uh, does... we... Go ahead. Go John. ahead, Diane. I'm still oh. considering my. Okay. Well, my question is: Does anybody have any idea? I mean, Iowa's very attractive place for these, for these data centers. Does anybody have any idea how many are more are potentially out there? I certainly don't know, Diane. Um, I, I think uh, that given the amount of capacity that we have to reserve for them, there's certainly a limit to the number that we would like to see um, on our system, but I can't tell you if anyone has a plan or what the ultimate number is. Hmm. Joel, you. Ted, does, so does I understand that the water will be metered uh, going to the data center that's outside the south zone. Is water from this well already uh, transmitted out, shipped outside the south zone for other uses? Or is it, has it totally been contained in the south zone? It has totally been contained in the south zone to this point. This will be the first place where water is allowed to leave the south zone. Anything else on this item? The only thing that occurs to me about this is I think about, you know, as we consider regionalization, this is one of the many agreements uh, that would be, you know, eventually would transfer from Des Moines Water Works to the new regional entity. Is that correct, Ted? Yeah, Graham, I would say that you are correct. And there may even be a possibility that it this agreement becomes unnecessary. Oh, interesting. Um, the, the facilities will, will be there and they will have paid for them. But I think the, the regional capacity credit, the you know purchase capacity concept sort of goes away with our regional concept. And so the regional and, and maybe credit would too. Right. And maybe that some of the assets would become regionally owned too, as opposed to owned by by you know the entities that own them now. Yeah, the control valve absolutely would become a regional asset. But the meter pit, uh, frankly, will probably become unnecessary. All right. Right. Um, tower would likely still be in West Des Moines distribution system and be their asset. Mm -hmm. Right. You anyway, know, I didn't want to. But just it's something to contemplate anyway. Yeah. Remind no. me again, Ted, how, what's the construction timeline on this? Well, um, let me see. The, the throttling valve facility is, is expected to be online by August of 2022. No, I mean the data centers, not oh. the facilities, the data centers. Yeah, that I don't know, Mike. Do you have a sense of that? Yeah, there could be some... Uh... We probably didn't cover this very well, but there could be some load, some water demand for the data centers as early as next August. We won't see the full demand right away. They build these data centers in stages. So they're, they're planning on building these things over three plus, maybe four or five years, Diane. So we want to get this throttling valve in in August of 22 to address some of the initial loads. Uh, they're going to come along with their water tank uh, in 2023, and I should say the meter pit will also need to be kind of a August 22, August of 22 uh, timeline there to again address the initial demand of the of the initial build out of the data centers. How do these things fit into our long term plan, or are they not enough to impact it? Or we're getting a number of them. 
Yeah, I, um, I think, oh, go ahead, Michael. Oh, I, I was just going to say that that was part of, uh, you know, one of the reasons we acquired HDR to come in and do kind of a, a review of our long range plan in the first quarter was um, to kind of pick up some of these things that we really didn't know about in 2017. Yeah. So, we, you know, as we hear about them, we're trying to include them. Um, it's always elusive, as you kind of pointed out with your initial question about what are the true demands. Uh, just yeah. in our discussions with West Des Moines, we know that they've done significant work there and effort to make sure they truly understand the, the water demands of the facilities. So I think that's the most important step for any local public water supply in the region is to understand what, what are these loads going to look like. And I wish we had a roadmap for how many there were going to be, but I think yeah. it's going to be a take them as they come and yeah. caution people about the benefits and the cons to these things. Just so everybody understands the reason that they like to locate here is because of the cost of energy and because of the com corporate commitments they have made for renewable energy. And we have that in this state. So it makes an ideal place for them to come because our cost is still low. Um, and I don't really see that changing. And this is uh, somewhat tangential to the issue at hand, uh, but to your question about you know future development, I'll be curious to see um, if there's a chilling effect on the development of new data centers here after there was a, a bill in the legislature this year that would have, it was ostensibly aimed at censor censorship that would have stripped away all tax credits, local and state, from any internet companies that censored content and censoring was really broad it meant you know any kind of algorithm to promote content so everything we see in any kind of social media feed is you know there's some kind of algorithm behind it and so it would have forced required state and local governments to end uh subsidies and even claw back subsidies to internet companies and so uh, i don't think that's going anywhere maybe, maybe yet to be seen maybe others know more than me but I wouldn't be surprised if, even if it doesn't pass, I mean, you know, might have a chilling effect on future data center developments here. Um, but tangential to the main issue at hand, but I thought that was interesting. Interesting, thanks. All right, any other thoughts or comments on item 3C? Hearing and seeing none, we have a motion and a second. So I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hopper? Yes. And Muttons? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Moving on to item 3D. This is the request for authorization to execute the fifth amendment to the Water Service Enhancement Agreement clarifying ownership of the Waukee Booster Station. Ted, you want to explain the Fifth Amendment? I do, Graham. The, um, I, I will say that the first three amendments are, are no longer in effect, to the best of my knowledge. But this one is, is kind of a standalone agreement. And I will say this, that um, the Waukee Booster Station was constructed at the same time that the LP Moon um, pumping station and storage tank were constructed. And there has long been confusion about uh, who owns that facility and who's responsible for, you know, capital replacement and, and those things. Uh, our position has long been that, you know, Waukee owns it. It serves only them. Um, I, I think that just as people come and go, there's been a lot of confusion. Um, this would be the only uh, dedicated booster station that Des Moines Waterworks owned if we did own it. So recently, Mike, McKernan and his folks in engineering have had good conversations with Waukee and I, everyone has come to the agreement that um, that Waukee booster station that was built at the same time as LP Moon and it functions in, in concert with LP Moon is not part of the regional system. It is part of Waukee's system and uh, they own it. 
Um, this, in our opinion, really isn't changing anything. It's just simply clarifying for every for everyone and forevermore that Waukee does own uh, the Waukee Booster Station, and they are responsible for um, capital replacement. I think is probably the big thing. We'll, we'll, they've always been responsible for operation and maintenance costs. We do the work, but we bill them. But capital replacement is the the one thing that um, for the regional facilities we've been responsible for. But um, this will clarify that and ensure that everyone understands that Waukee does own that facility. Excellent. So what I'm seeking is a motion to approve and authorize the chairperson to execute the fifth amendment to the water service enhancement agreement, clarifying ownership of the Waukee booster station. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. A second from Joel. Are there any questions or comments on item 3D? Hearing and seeing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 3E. This is a request permission to issue purchase order for the rehabilitation of lime sludge dewatering press equipment. Um, Ted, why don't you explain this one? Yeah, Graham, as you can see in the memo, um, the fluid drive treatment plant employs lime softening, the lime residuals that are a byproduct from that process uh, are dewatered and, and hauled and used as uh, a pH adjustment, soil pH adjustment materials. Um, the facility was built um, in the early 90s. It's been in service ever since then, pretty much continuously. And um, some of the, the components have reached their useful life. Um, we have worked with the manufacturer to um, identify some um, upgrades and enhancements that we need to do to rehabilitate those presses. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to do is, is purchase uh, a fairly substantial amount of equipment, $342,000 worth of parts and equipment that will then subsequently be used in a, a contract that we will negotiate with the manufacturer to uh, actually rehabilitate the presses. The lead time on the equipment is, is long. We want to get the equipment here so that we can um, do the rehab in, in the appropriate window when um, we can be without one of the presses at a time. So um, we're asking the board to authorize a purchase order for purchase of the equipment only in the amount of $342,388 with the understanding that we will then subsequently um, negotiate a, a contract or um, work with the, uh, the vendor, the manufacturer to actually do the upgrades. Excellent. And the name of this company, is it Evaqua? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's how I say it. Mike, can you confirm or deny that? <laughs> I'll come at you a little bit different here. I'm going to go with the Evoqua. Evoqua, okay. Uh, get the long O in there. All right. Well, I'm looking for a motion to authorize staff to issue a purchase order to Evoca, Evoqua Water Technologies, LLC, in the amount of $342,388 for the necessary parts and equipment for the rehabilitation of the existing lime sludge dewatering press equipment in the lime sludge dewatering facility. Is there a motion to that effect? Second. In a second, any comments or questions on item 3E? Hearing and seeing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right, moving on to item uh, 3 F, this is a request authorization to execute 28E agreement by and between the Board of Waterworks Trustees of the City of Des Moines, Iowa and West Des Moines Waterworks regarding withdrawal of water for treatment from the Raccoon River alluvial sources. Ted? Graham, this is an item we've talked about a number of times already in the past. 
Um, as you're all aware, West Des Moines Waterworks applied for a permit to withdraw water from the rack removal alluvial upstream from us. Um, the uh, Iowa Department of Natural Resources did indicate their intention or they recommended that the permit be issued. Um, they did take some of our comments that we had submitted during the public comment period for that permit, but the permit they recommend issuing, we were uh, we still had some concerns that our, our interests weren't protected and that we may have some um, uh, issues with obtaining the water we need during extremely dry conditions. Uh, we did appeal that permit and, and part of the appeal process is um, this sort of informal resolution. We've been working with West Des Moines Waterworks for a number of months on just exactly what that would look like. Um, I think our staff, specifically Kyle Danley, came up with a, a fairly elegant solution that uh, adds an additional trigger uh, to West Des Moines' uh, removal of water from the alluvial um, that's downstream of all of our use so that if, if our use is causing the, the river level to, to drop to send 10 CFS here at Fuller Drive, then uh, once we get to that trigger, subject to a couple of other considerations like um, everyone is in their water shortage plan and we don't have you know, ample quantities of water available on the Des Moines River that we could just use instead. But once we get to that, that trigger point, then um, West Des Moines would be uh, expected to um, uh, use an alternate source before we would be expected to do that. I, I think that this is a, is a good agreement. It, it's protective for us at these very low River, river levels, which frankly don't happen very often. Um, it, it also allows them um, to get their permit and, and use water when it's available, but it's protective for us. Um, we've structured this agreement as a separate 2080 agreement as opposed to a condition within their um, water use permit. Um, uh, John Landy actually, I think, suggested that that might be a, a good way to, to move this forward as opposed to um, trying to get it into their permit just the way we wanted it. So we were able to work directly with West Des Moines and get the conditions the way that we wanted that both parties could agree to. Um, West Des Moines Water Works Board has approved this agreement. Um, they did approve it subject to our approval here today, but we would ask that the board approve the 2080 agreement between us and West Des Moines Water Works relative to their water use from the raccoon. Great, so I'm seeking a motion to approve and authorize the chairperson to execute a 2080 agreement by and between the Board of Water Works trustees of the city of Des Moines, Iowa and West Des Moines Water Works regarding withdrawal of water for treatment from the Raccoon River alluvial sources. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. Second. And a motion a second. Any comments or questions on item 3F? I, I have a question. Ted, do we know what their plan B is if all of these triggers were met and they had to find another source? We don't know yet, Andrea. We do know that as part of um, any construction permit application that they would make for a treatment plant that they will have to identify what their alternate source is. Um, it could be that they will you know, look at the number of days that they would anticipate um, being restricted based on this condition and they would um, find gravel pit storage that they could use to provide water for that number of days. Or they may consider um, drilling a deep well or something like that. Um, we don't know, but we do know that they will be expected to um, identify that source before they would be able to uh, construct the plant. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question or comment? I have one. I just want to, I want to be, I want to reassurance. This is not an agreement that one of the parties could cancel unilaterally. Is, am I correct? Um, John, I might ask you to comment, John Landy, on the termination clause um, or termination clauses. Yeah. 
Uh, no is the short answer, uh, I think. Uh, the agreement set to last 40 years or uh, unless a more restrictive standard is put in place. So um, yeah, I, I think it would last until, until it expired. I appreciate that. And I, if, and correct me, John, I, I, I think that one of the reasons you recommended the 28E as the standalone agreement, as opposed to putting it into the other, is for, is for that reason, right? I mean, it, it makes it very clear and it, it frankly makes it harder to cancel. Am I correct in thinking that way? Yeah, I, I think a permit condition would be potentially subject to renewal or amendment whenever the, the permit renewal occurred. So with this drafting, um, you know, we've kind of uh, established a baseline uh, that will last for the duration of the agreement unless, unless we need to in, make it more protective uh, or more, more restrictive. No, I appreciate that. I think that's a, I, I appreciate your approach to this, John, because I think this made it, um, it protected us a, a lot in a, in a greater capacity than had we put it into the permit. And, you know, that was a nice catch and a, and a creative way to do this. And I appreciate it. Thank you. John or uh, Record Ted, whoever wants to tell this, what about the remedies? What, um, uh, are the difference in our remedies if they were to uh, draw more than they're allowed under a 2080 versus a permit? Presumably the state would be involved if they violated the permit. And you'd think that would be a, um, you know, a, would it be a little more leverage for, to get them to comply than, you know, perhaps a contract claim from us? But talk to me about that. What should I be thinking about well, that? Uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, Joel. Uh, I think DNR is going to be responsible for enforcing the terms of its permit, uh, which we are not a party to. And so if we find ourselves in a situation where we believe West Des Moines is not in compliance, uh, I think our immediate remedy might be to seek DNR's assistance in trying to get West Des Moines to uh, remedy that, that situation. Uh, with the 2080, uh, you know, we don't have DNR involved. I think our view is that uh, we've got the ability to go to court um, and quickly seek a temporary injunction. Uh, if you look at the terms of the agreement, uh, the way it's drafted, it's designed to apply to really uh, kind of dire conditions on the Raccoon River, which would be the type of circumstances where I think you would see uh, a need for expedited relief uh, in the court. And so, you know, kind of weighing those two options, I think our view was we'd like to be in control in that situation uh, and be the one going to court and seeking that kind of relief uh, to force West Des Moines to use its alternate source so that we could uh, use the Raccoon River in that kind of dire situation. I note that the agreement itself provides for injunctive relief without bond. That answer your question, Joel? It did. Thank you. Great. Anybody else have a question or comment on this item? Seeing and hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record, record a vote on item 3F. Eschbrenner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. Okay, so now we move into item 3G, request authorization to reimburse the City of Des Moines for water main relocations within the City of Des Moines projects. Ted? Yeah, Graham, these are three different projects. We've decided to consolidate the three projects into one memo. It's all fairly similar um, situations where the city is doing a project in some case, um, roadway, some storm, some sidewalk, but um, all city of Des Moines construction projects where we have water main either relocation or alteration or replacement that we will then reimburse them for. Um, you can see the three projects there, the closest Creek storm sewer, East Douglas Avenue reconstruction, and Western Ingersoll run sewer separation. Um, the board will recall that uh, about a year ago, we did replace some water main on that East Douglas corridor in this sort of same area. That was a complete replacement that we did ahead of the city's project. This um, is additional work, alterations and things that we couldn't do until the city's project was underway and they had the streets out and whatnot. So 
Um, three projects, a grand total of $729,049. We would ask that the board authorize staff to reimburse the city for water main work on these three projects. We have um, in the past taken up um, items like this individually. Uh, Ted and I discussed you know, putting them in a group, grouping the three of them together. Um, you know, that being said, either this time or in the future, if we decide to group them together, I'm always happy and will to entertain a motion to separate them and we can vote on them separately uh, if, if a board member would like to do that. Um, that being said, I'm looking for a motion to authorize the staff to reimburse the city of Des Moines for water main re relocations, the three of these listed above, within the city of Des Moines projects um, as stated above. So if there is a motion to that, that effect or a motion to separate them, I will entertain them. I'll move to move forward with the way that they are currently stacked. And I'll second it. A second to that motion. I believe Sue seconded. Yes. I'm sorry, my, okay, thank you. My uh, sound is cutting in and out, so I think we're okay. Um, any comments or questions on that? Hold on. I'm having sound issues. Give me a moment, please. Can everyone hear me? I apologize. Yes, I can hear you. You're coming through clear. It's it's my it's my earphones that are giving me a hard time. So Okay, I think I'm back. I'm I'm sorry. I don't think there's any comments or questions. So I'll ask, uh, where where am I? I'm lost here. We have a motion and a second. I think uh, according I to think vote. we have a motion and second. Discussion, potentially, and then a vote. All right. So is there any discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, I will um, ask for Michelle to record the vote and try to get my sound right. Ashburner. Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Huppert? Yes. Munns? Yes. Excellent. Uh, moving on to item 3H. Um, this is the award of the 2021 Des Moines Water Main Replacement Contract 2 Feeder Main at Southeast 15th Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. This is a public hearing, so I will... Um, open the public hearing for comments from the public concerning the project's form of contract plans and specifications. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this item? Is the estimated cost supposed to be in there? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not on my Yes, it should be. Oh, but I know, I know. <laughs> I'm making a note here. So also for the estimated costs, okay. All right, uh, I don't think there's anyone here to speak on this. And Ted, have we uh, received any comments from the public? No, Graham, we have received no comments. All right. Um, so with that being said, I will close the public, the public hearing. And the next order of business is to seek a motion to approve the project's form of contract plans and specifications and estimated cost. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. second. And we have a second. Any comments or questions on the motion? Hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record a vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Huppert? Yes. Munns? Yes. Excellent. All right. And so now I will ask Ted to provide an analysis of the bids and make a recommendation. Thanks, Graham. Um, this, as the board will recall, is uh, a, a bit of transmission, 48 inch transmission main that we need to replace to facilitate construction of the uh, transload facility here in the city of Des Moines. Um, not a project we were expecting to have to do, but during the initial evaluation of the site, we determined that the casing pipe that passes under two active rail lines and, and 
um, a, a portion of the site to be developed had deteriorated and needed to be replaced. The only way to replace it is to replace the whole thing. So um, we did have a lot of interest in this project. You can see we had five bidders on the project. Unfortunately, um, the, the bids have come in um, significantly over the estimate. Um, Kyle Danley was very involved in, in the project. He's given me some background on um, the, the rationale or the reasons why the project is um, over budget or over estimate, I guess I would call it over estimate. Um, a, a couple of things related to um, railroad requirements that became apparent after the estimate or after the last board meeting. Um, they wanted us to install additional casing. They wanted us to install a heavier wall thickness of casing. Um, casing is in inch thick, one inch thick wall is what they're requiring for this size casing. It's extremely expensive. Um, there were um, other material cost increases that we weren't expecting. We're just seeing that uh, materials and labor for that matter are uh, quite expensive right now, both on this project and the next one that we're going to discuss. But we did get five bids on this project. We feel that they're responsive. It's a project that we need uh, to do to facilitate um, completion of the transload facility on the schedule that they have established for their grant funding. And so we are recommending uh, that the board award the contract. We're happy to answer questions if you have any about the cost. So I'm looking for a motion to award the 2021 Des Moines Water Main Replacement Contract to Peter Main at Southeast 15th Street in Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway, Parkway contract to Raccoon Valley Contractors LLC in the amount of $1,619,000 and $1,619,134 and authorize the chairperson and CEO and general manager to execute the contract. Is there a motion to that effect? Which includes the base bid plus the alternate, I would think should be in the motion. I agree with that. And so that would be included in the motion. So moved. And a second. Second. And I have a second. Any questions or comments about this item? Ted, Seems should we be concerned or strategizing about the rising costs of construction, um, particularly considering you know we could see a lot of infrastructure spending that could um, uh, you know strain the supply of materials or labor? Um, what, what should be our outlook and concern at the moment? Well, I, Joel, I think we should definitely be concerned. Um, uh, both of the projects we did this month were um, expensive, more expensive than we expected. We've probably all heard about um, building materials specifically for home construction are 200% higher than they were a year ago. We're starting to hear concerns about the availability of PVC pipe um, the plastic pipe that we use for most of our uh, water main replacement jobs. So I, I think there's certainly reason for, for concern and awareness. Uh, I think moving forward, we just have to um, consider that as we are uh, planning and, and bidding our projects. We have to try to get a sense of you know, what, the, what the revised material costs are gonna be. Um, it's a little hard though, because in some cases you can't even get materials. And so um, if you can't get them, it hardly matters what the cost is, but it's certainly something we need to consider. Um, I don't have a, a good overview or outline for you of what our strategy should be moving forward other than we need to be aware that material costs are, are certainly going up. Um, contractors are, are extremely busy right now and we're likely um, this construction season going to pay more than we anticipated for the projects that we planned to do. And hopefully we're going to see a stabilization in some of this and, and prices will, will come down. I mean, I, I think Joel's question is a good one that we have to, there may be a, a future item that comes to us where we have to make a decision whether it's whether we're, it's possible and wise for us to delay a project. Obviously, with a feeder main replacement, I don't think that's a question that we're even considering whether it's something we can delay because we have to go forward. But 
um, it is concerning, but hopefully it's a, a temporary blip. There's going to be a bubble of infrastructure spending, and I think that's going to drive prices up. All right. You're exactly right, Graham. All right. The, other... Sorry. No, please, go ahead. Uh, the, additional, the additional requirements for constructions that the, that's the railroad that's imposing those, do we feel like those are adequate, that we agree with them, or excessive? You know, um, and I'll also add, would there be anything we could really do about it if yeah. we do feel that they are excessive? The, the railroads are sort of perennially um, challenging, I would say. Um, they, uh, you know, own these ribbons of, of property that cross the, the state. Um, you know, these are their requirements. Um, they're uh, more onerous than we expected. And I, I don't know, Kyle may be, may be able to comment on why that was and why they're, they're more onerous or if these are just their standard expectations for a project this size. But I can tell you that if we were installing 72 inch casing on a project anywhere else, we would not be using one inch wall thickness. That's just a heavier duty um, material than we would normally use. Um, Kyle, can you comment on whether these are their standards or whether they are above standard? The wall thickness was slightly above what we would have previously used for under a railroad. It wasn't uh, significant, but it was slightly more. The steel prices right now are just uh, astronomical. They have been going up. Um, one of the other expenses is the railroad uh, had some requirements. that They wanted the bore longer or we were going to have to go through extensive uh, shoring to, um, to meet their requirements. And it was uh, determined that the adding some extra casing to the project was going to be cheaper and quicker than trying to do an elaborate design shoring system uh, to me next to the railroad. And so there were several um, things that added. I, I wouldn't say that it was extreme, uh, but certainly looked more than what we would have done if we were crossing um, other things, but again, the, the railroads it's typically uh, better to follow their requirements or the, can delay the project significantly. And there's no, uh, sorry, railroads are kind of my area of interest. Um, the, is there any sort of agreement or um, liability with the railroad for what we put underneath their, their right of way? Or, you know, if, if we did go with something lesser and it failed, that would be our problem, regardless of what they're doing on top of the surface, correct? Uh, I, I think if we refuse to meet their requirements, they could prevent us from crossing their property. I mean, it's, it's their property. Um, Rick, I don't know if you have a perspective on that from a legal Yeah, uh, there are a couple of things at work. Uh, traditionally, the railroads have uh, kind of been able to dictate terms. Uh, there's some statutory provisions that limit that under the jurisdiction biannual recall of the utilities board. Yeah. And uh, there are some protections in place, but there's also the practicality of not making a litigation uh, matter uh, that gets in the way of getting this project completed. And there's some external factors here that demand that the project get completed quickly and before the end of the year because of some city grants and things like that. This just came up on an unexpected emergency basis. And uh, I think what the Waterworks is doing is just navigating uh, this uh, on the best basis possible uh, to get the proper uh, approvals. Uh, under the utility board regulations, uh, there can be insurance requirements and things like that, that I think the uh, engineering staff are negotiating with the railroads also. Um, I guess I'll mention also that there are uh, provisions that still need to be put in place to uh, pay the necessary fees to get crossing permissions, not only with the railroad, but with another landowner entity that Diane will recall named Hawkeye Land, who is involved here because they have certain rights to demand fees uh, for uh, utilities and right away that cross their particular 
rights that were granted out of the bankruptcy of the Rock Island Railroad. Maybe more information than you need or wanted, but uh, suffice it to say, there are some checks and balances and engineering and legal are navigating those checks and balances. Commensurate with getting the project done on a timely basis, which is a huge imperative here. Did that answer the question? I'm kind of rambled a bit. Sure, yeah, no, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments on item 3H? Hearing and see or seeing none, I'll ask Michelle to report the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right, so uh, item, uh, the next item is the award of the nitrate removal facility crawl space renovation. This also is a public hearing, so I will open uh, the public hearing for comments from the public concerning the project's form of contract plans and specifications and estimated cost. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the board on this item? Hearing none, Ted, have we received any comments from the public? No, we have not, Graham. With that, I will close the public hearing and seek a motion to approve the project's form of contract, plans and specifications and estimated costs. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comment or questions on this motion? Um, hearing none, I'll ask Michelle to record the vote. Ashburn? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. Great. And Ted, will you provide an analysis of the bids? Analysis of the bids, please. I will, Graham. Um, the board will recall that this project was originally slated to come uh, before the board for award a month ago, but during design of the project, we discovered that there was significantly more deterioration in our nitrate removal facility than we had originally expected. So we delayed um, bidding the project so that we could address those additional concerns. Um, you can see in, in the memo there that we had three contractors who were very interested in the project. Unfortunately, when we expanded the scope, one of them was unable to bond. Um, they just couldn't mm -hmm. be bonding to do a project of this size. One of the others uh, was um, awarded an, an, another project that was going to conflict with this one in time. And so we ended up having just one bidder. Uh, we never like to have just one bidder. This is fairly specialized work. And, and as I just described, um, other contractors in the field weren't available. We, we got a bid from um, Hankel Construction. Um, Hankel, as you know, was the, con the contractor who uh, did the park improvement project. They're also uh, building our um, pumping station up north for Polk City. They've become a, a valued contractor for us and, and they do good work. Um, the project is somewhat over the, the engineer's estimate, but given the condition of the facility and the timing and our need to get in there and do the work, we are going to recommend to the board that we award this project to Hinkle and, and get in and get it done before there's any additional deterioration to the facility. Excellent. So I'm looking for a motion to award the nitrate removal facility crawl space renovation contract to Henkel Construction Company in the amount of $1,312,000 and authorize the chairperson and CEO and general manager to execute the contract. Is there a motion to that effect? Again, for the base bid plus the alternate. Thank you. One day I'll get it right. So, mid, so moved, Graham. And I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. And any comments or questions about this item, which is item three I, I believe. Seeing and hearing, no. oh, go ahead, is there a question? No. All right, seeing no question, I'll have Michelle record the vote. Ashburner? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munns? Yes. All right, um, so I'm going to kind of skip over item J and we'll come back to that in a minute because we may 
uh, consider going into a closed session. And so it might make sense to go through this. So I will go down to uh, section four and look for board and committee reports. And first up is planning committee. So I look to Andrea. Sure. Yes. Um, I won't go too deep into this, but many of you are on that call, but we um, discussed the uh, plume um, and uh, the update there that things are um, remaining steady or looking better than anticipated. And then uh, went over the um, Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation's event schedule, which we can talk more about that when we get to that part, unless you want me to roll into that now. Sure, feel free to do that. Uh, so Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation had their great, their extraordinary egg event this week in or this weekend in conjunction with the Earth Day bash, trash bash. Um, I think it, I unfortunately was very sick this weekend and missed it, but it, from all reports I heard, it was extremely um, successful. Um, continuing to work on fundraising to secure the remaining dollars needed to um, close out phase one um, and also make some adjustments to the existing Lordson Amphitheater to, uh, um, to uh, make it more conducive to have the large events there um, with um, when weather is, is threatening. Um, well, the group is also trying to maintain how they continue into this summer, keeping COVID um, regulations in mind and how to get some normalcy while also staying safe. But there's much more to uh, dive into in the attached no notes if you are interested. So there are comments on planning committee and the uh, Waterworks Park Foundation board. Is there any, are there any comments or questions for to be added there? Hearing, hearing that, I'll move to finance and audit and that is Joel. Yes, we had a good discussion of the five-year capital improvement plan and particularly the need to begin acting quickly to meet the growing demands of the region. So something we've discussed before and um, yet again today, so. Excellent. Customer Relations Committee, we're gonna talk about regionalization here in a minute, but Sue, is there anything to add? Uh, nothing, we had a closed session, as you know, and we came out of that without action. Okay, excellent. Um, very quickly, the Bill Stowe Memorial Committee, we continue to meet and make progress on uh, moving forward, and um, there's some momentum picking up there, and I'll have more to report in the weeks to come, I hope. Um, the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden, uh, the new CEO is uh, on the job this week, and uh, I think we'll have an opportunity to meet her as a board in the, in the near future. Um, Ted and uh, Jen and I and other have been working on um, our future relationship with uh, the Botanical Garden and I think we'll be ready to, to talk about that more in the coming weeks, don't you think, Ted? Yeah, I do, Graham. We actually um, received a proposal from the Botanical Garden on what they uh, would like to do from an educational perspective. Uh, Jen and I are gonna review that tomorrow morning and then hopefully when you and I meet tomorrow afternoon, we can have a look at that. Perfect, so look for that soon uh, to come to our board. Um, with that, we move into item B, which is staff updates and external affairs. So this is, I turn this over to Jen, I think. Thanks, Graham. Um, today I have highlights about three topics. Uh, the first one is legislative affairs. Uh, in terms of our state legislative session, the official close of the session is this Friday, April 30th. But my understanding is that the session is likely to continue through next week and possibly beyond that. Um, we also met last week, uh, several of our staff met with um, Senators Ernst and Grassley, staff members, and those were really productive discussions. They were very engaged. We updated them on our new PFAS findings, um, our increased challenges with water quality concerns, particularly harmful algal blooms, um, and infrastructure funding needs. And so they're going to be following up on a couple of those things um, on our behalf. 
Uh, the second topic is public affairs highlights. So as you had mentioned earlier, I have been meeting with the Botanical Garden staff and crafting a proposal for programming expectations about source water, watersheds, and drinking water treatment for the next three to five years. And so as a result of those discussions, they did send um, a proposal, which Ted and I were, are reviewing tomorrow, as he said. So it looks like they've been creative and they've got some good ideas in there. Um, I've been invited to participate on an advisory panel for America's Watershed Initiative, which issues a Mississippi River report card each year. They're seeking technical advisors. So this may be an opportunity to influence, hopefully, some um, uh, source water issues and tell our story at the national level. So that's interesting. We had a meeting of that last week. <clears throat> I've been participating on the Greater Des Moines Partnerships Federal Policy Committee the past few months. Um, several of the planks we su suggested were included in the draft that went to the executive committee, I think last week. I have not received word whether they were left in the final version, um, but that final version is our playbook then for the legislative fly-in that happens uh, in September when we go to DC. Uh, Susan Huppert, I don't know if you have seen the final version of that. No, policy, okay. Um, we added some interesting things about harmful algal blooms and PFAS remedial investigations and things like that. So we got some good stuff in there if they keep it in. Um, the last thing under public affairs is um, Iowa Secretary of Agriculture Mike Nag has a significant influence over ag policy and funding in the state. And he's also the co-chair of the Gulf of Mexico uh, Hypoxia Task Force. So we believe it will be useful for him to have an understanding of our source water challenges linked to land use and our watersheds. And so this past Monday, we issued an invitation to him to meet with us and he has accepted. And so we are working on bringing he, uh, Secretary Neg and his staff here for a tour within probably the next three weeks. Um, so that will be interesting. We will do a tour of the plant and then probably have a, a meeting here in the boardroom. Um, the last um, item is overlap of public and legislative affairs. I'm trying to help find pathways for reimbursement of our million dollar COVID expense um, claim that we made to FEMA. That claim was denied almost in its entirety. We do have a chance to appeal. Um, also, our uh, advocacy strategies team has met with the governor's office this week, and it may be the case that we would be eligible and have a chance at possibly receiving some American Rescue Plan Act dollars uh, from the state government, but it's definitely not a sure thing, but we're working on it. We're gathering all of the documentation that we need. And I was going to update uh, Rick and John about that, which I guess I just did. So I don't see a need, a reason to stop the appeal, but uh, just to let you know. Um, if anyone has any questions, otherwise that's my update. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We've got Sue and Andrea both have their hands raised. All right, uh, Sue, go ahead. Um, yeah, Jen, I wanted to say you ask if the if the draft has been finalized. I believe that goes to the executive committee for the partnership the first week in May. Um, but when we were when all the chairs were bringing forward the final language. Um, the person who chaired your committee said there was some great work brought together by Jen Terry and really cool and this could be very innovative and just all kinds of positive statements about the suggestions you had made. So keep your fingers crossed and maybe it'll be in our final version, but nice job, Jen. Oh, thank you. That'll be really fun. We put some fun stuff in there that'll be really good for drinking water and source water. Thank you. Great. Andrea. Yeah. First, I apologize. I did not mean to clap when you said that our COVID <laughs> funding was denied. <laughs> I was trying to raise my hand. Um, but I, I was just going to add, kind of going off of what the partnership document, um, I'll be very interested if you can bring that back to us or, or shoot us out an email how that turns out. I know in the past that some of our suggestions have, uh, have not made it into the final draft. Um, and I'll just uh, want to request a kind of a follow-up to see how it does turn out. Absolutely, for sure. Excellent. Anything else for Jen? Great. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Ted, time for your comments. A couple things for me, Graham. One, um, our utility goals update for the first quarter of this year is in the packet. We had four goals related to um, one related to evaluating treatment plan expansion, one related to 
or lead and copper rule enhancements. Um, one related to our five-year strategic plan, one related to safety. All of those are on track. Um, a couple of things I would highlight. Um, we are here uh, at the end of April almost, and we've had one recordable injury. Um, we don't obviously want to celebrate having an injury, but having only one at the, almost the end of uh, April is, is a positive. Um, we're getting a lot of feedback from employees on near misses, which was sort of a focus for this year. So we're very pleased that the safety team is doing a great job there. Um, we also are really getting into our strategic planning process in earnest. Um, we have our community advisory group seated um, based on some feedback from Sue. We talked to the consultant and we're going to try to lessen the burden, but we did get a great group of people engaged to be part of our community advisory group. Um, the lead service line thing, the lead and copper rule, the Biden administration has actually kind of pushed pause on implementation of that. So we're uh, in, on hold again, kind of in limbo, waiting to see if they do anything differently. And uh, I think you're well aware of where we're headed with long range planning and treatment plan expansion and what we're doing there. Um, COVID update, from my perspective, I don't really have a lot to share. Jen shared what's going on with the, our FEMA claim. Um, we are essentially fully back in the office now. Pretty much all of our staff is back or will be back very shortly, still following COVID protocols in the buildings and whatnot. But we're getting to the point now where folks who want to be vaccinated are just kind of waiting for CDC guidance. Um, the general office is still closed to walk-in customers, but probably in May or June, um, we'll open back up. We really have not had um, a lot of it, um, outcry, no outcry, really not even a lot of interest in the, in the office opening back up. I think people are just used to that kind of um, situation uh, around the country right now. So but we are going to open back up here in the not too distant future. And then the last thing I would share is that uh, Andrea had mentioned that planning, uh, we talked about the, the TCE plume that is to the south of us along Bell Avenue. And if any of you happen to be in, in the Waterworks parking lot this week, you'll see a fleet of US EPA vehicles. Um, they've got a mobile lab here and they are uh, addressing that concern in earnest, um, taking samples and doing evaluation. And um, they're going to take over uh, management of that site from the DNR. The DNR reached impasse with the property owner. So now the EPA is here, they're on the ground and, and they're hopefully going to make progress in uh, getting that thing stopped and, and cleaned up so we don't have uh, further problems with TCE uh, affecting our gallery. That's it for me, Graham. Excellent. And I'll just say that I had um, put out a note earlier uh, a few weeks ago about planning for this board to start meeting again in July. And I think we'll, get, we'll, we'll focus on that target, maybe revisit it in May and, and decide if we want to move it up till June or not. But um, I, I think like Ted suggested, let's wait to see what the CD, CDC says and what our experience with customers and, and moving back into the building is um, and decide whether we want to meet in person for the first time in June or July. I'll be interested if it feels right to do some kind of combination, you know, maybe committee meetings are virtual and board in person once it's advisable. Uh, I, I know I find a lot of the time savings from doing it virtual, but a lot of lost connections and kind of informal discussions we lose by not being there. So I considering the trade-offs. Yep. And I am, I am open to all that conversation. Ted and his staff are uh, working to ensure that we will still have a virtual option uh, moving forward um, so that whether it's from a safety concern or just from a convenience concern that we maintain this video option for, for not only board members, but for staff members and the public as well. So um, Joel and everybody else, I, you know, just consider this and let's talk about it again. And I see right. Sue has a question in chat for you. Oh, does she? Oh, uh, well, sorry, I didn't notice. Um, it's for you, Ted. I'm not quite sure what she's referring to. Yeah, I am I missed when you posted it, Sue, so I'm not sure what we're sizing up here. Sue, you were asking what the size of something was? 
Oh, I'm sorry, Sue, you're muted. Um, the plume you were talking about, I'm just curious when you said if you're in the park and you see it, I'm just curious, what is the size of this plume? Well, the plume is is very large. It's, it's It spans a number of uh, city blocks, but you won't see it. It's underground in the groundwater. But what okay. you will see in the parking lot is this fleet of US EPA vehicles. I see. I think so there were four or five vehicles, including a huge um, mobile lab that, that looks like uh, a big mobile home. But they're, they're here in force and they're doing sampling and evaluation. But the plume is very large and I will um, uh, get uh, a map of that plume sent out to the board so you all have a sense of how big it is and, and where it is and where it's moving. Sorry, I missed that. Thank you. Thanks, Sorry. Um, all right, so moving back to item J and this is a discussion on regionalization. Um, I thought, you know, a lot of us have had conversations, the staff has, the microgroup has, um, back and forth. Um, and I thought it was important for us to get together again to think about, you know, our next step forward. Um, as, as all of you know, the microgroup has completed their work, um, with the exception of their finalizing a, a final report that they hope to distribute. Um, we've discussed as, a, as the Des Moines Water Works Board that we feel it's our responsibility to put forth a draft 28E document, um, that that's probably a job that's incumbent on us and not another entity. And so we've begun that process. And as for those listening in, I mean, that's been um, a main focus of the, our previous closed sessions. Um, I mean, quite frankly, there are a number of unanswered and complicated questions that we are still struggling with, um, but, um, I think that all of us are committed to kind of pursuing regionalization by uh, I think the term I used with Ted and Amy earlier this week was, you know, staying in the guardrails. Uh, and some of those, you know, those guardrails are in place and we're not arguing about whether we turn right or left. We're, we're trying to, to keep moving down the road. And, um, you know, and when I say those guardrails, I mean, there are certain things like um, using book value uh, to determine asset transfer or giving credit for purchase capacity agreements and that sort of thing. Those are those guardrails we're trying to, to stay within. But now we're just doing the hard work of determining how do you do that? How do you, how do you keep the car moving forward? Um, so we've talked in open sessions and closed sessions about um, you know, the parameters for forming a regional body, uh, putting weight to you know, how voices are represented on that governing board body, paying for future growth in the region, uh, asset transfer and, and another, uh, another uh, uh, host of other issues. Um, what I'm proposing is today is that we, we have a session where we discuss kind of the determining of values, if you will, um, of, uh, when it comes to assets that are transferred. And again, assets are, um, what I consider hard assets, those, those water production assets that are used every day to produce uh, clean drinking water, uh, but also um, giving value to purchase capacity uh, agreements and, and, and that sort of thing. And so as much as I hate closed sessions, the reason this probably is a closed session is because it's, um, we all have a lot of questions and we have to determine the method we're gonna put uh, of, of finding value of these things and, and discussing um, the method almost more than the value that we place on, on individual assets. And if we were to have that discussion in, in public, it could harm negotiations because all of us are asking questions that doesn't necessarily mean that we have the answers, but we're trying to get our, our own minds around the methodology we're gonna use. And so it would be difficult to have a conversation to talk about assigning values to assets in a, in a public session. And so I, I'm suggesting this, as I say, as much as I hate a closed session, that it probably makes sense for us to do it in closed session so that we can talk about those methods. Um, and, and I'll just end with this before I, I seek a motion or a comment. I mean, it's going to be vital that the public, the ratepayers, our partner, our potential partners in regionalization, you know, have open and unfettered access to 
the options we're considering and the, the methodology we're using. And there's, there's a, you know, there's going to be a time and, and, and a very appropriate nature for that conversation. Um, we go into closed session so that we can, we can think about the methodology as individual board members and then come out and make the decisions in public. So um, again, I, I just, I'm gonna propose that we go into a closed session to talk about calculation member uh, methods for valuing water production and purchase capacity agreements, but we're not gonna make any decisions and should this motion pass and we go into a closed session, uh, we will come out and the only order of business we'll have is to adjourn. We won't take any further action. And so after that long winded um, opening, what I'm seeking is a close, a motion for a closed section, uh, a closed session under section 38, uh, 388.91 of the Code of Iowa to discuss marketing and pricing strategies and proprietary information that may impact uh, Des Moines Water Works competitive position by public disclo disclosure not required of potential or actual competitors related to ongoing negotiations over creating an integrated regional water authority. Each of these topics should be discussed in closed session to avoid disclosure, likely to prejudice or disadvantage the position of the Des Moines Water Works. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. I have a second. Are there any comments or questions about the closed session or need to do it, uh, your thoughts on it that you'd like to discuss or anything else you'd like to discuss in public before we go into closed session. Well said as to your rationale for the need. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think, and then I appreciate that, Joel. I think it's important that we, you know, continue to have as few closed sessions as possible, but also to inform people why we're going into them and why we think they're necessary. Indeed. All right. So with that said, I'll ask Michelle to record our note to go into a closed session. Ashburner. Yes. Fulton? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Munz? Yes. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our closed session, which we change formats to a Microsoft Teams meeting. Uh, we're going to sign out from this. Uh, everybody sign out from Zoom and sign into your Microsoft Team meeting. For those who are listening, we're going to come back and we're only going to adjourn. Um, but that's going to close out this section of the meeting. So I'll see everybody. Graham, I would suggest now might be a good time for a brief break if anyone needs to grab a drink of water or stretch their legs. So I got to step well, away from my desk for a quick second, but we'll be back well as said. soon as possible. We'll see everybody in about five or so minutes in the Microsoft Teams meeting. Thank you. I can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with. Somebody's talking to Siri. <laughs> or Siri was talking to somebody. I know Siri was talking back. Starting today, the default voice for Siri is no longer a woman. Really? We've got two, there's three. All right, well, we're waiting for Sue to come back, but I'll go ahead and get started here. We are coming out of our closed session on April the 27th, 2021. It was productive, but we not made any, any decisions. And so all I am looking for is a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion and I'm gonna give Diane the second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Hi. 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 Thanks, everybody. I truly appreciate your time. Thank you. Good night. Ed, do we have planning next week? What's on the agenda for next week? Uh, the planning committee meeting has. Uh, uh, you don't have to tell me what's on the agenda. I just, what committee? I'm trying to remember what committees are meeting next. We week. have both planning and customer relations. So we'll have a sh uh, 30 minute planning meeting at 3 30, and then at 4 o'clock, we'll move into this. Yeah. Uh, discussion in customer relations. 
that's what I thought. Just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Come, with your, come with your questions, Joel. I look forward to it. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Bye. Bye now.